Hi friends, it's Monica and let's watch some Shadow and Bone. First off, I did want to say that originally I had planned a video for this TV show when it released last year, but I never got around to it because of school and now I'm going to rewatch the season and do like a react one year later and see if the show holds up and spot out things that I may have not noticed before. There will be eight different videos covering the eight different episodes of season one of Shadow and Bone. So those will be linked in the description below when they're all uploaded and I'll be uploading them either like every day this next week or I might miss one or two days but they will all be uploaded eventually and this will be uploaded around the time that it's like one year mark of the show's release. I thought it was a good time to like revive the show and be more excited for season two which I hope will be releasing maybe early next year. Also a uh, fair bit of warning, I will be including a lot of spoilers because I'm going to be watching the show so there are spoilers for the books as well for the TV show. Um, the Grisha verse book, so Shadow and Bone, and the Six of Crows duology, so be forewarned before you watch all of these videos that are going to be uploaded. So let's just get right to it. But now, I'm old enough to know the only way out is through. So when I first saw the fold in the TV show, I was so impressed by the like special effects and the CGI because it does really look quite realistic and it shows like how massive the scale of the fold is so i'm really i'm really excited to get back into the show and see like what i've missed or haven't picked on because i did binge watch the show when it first came out so i think i just sped through everything picking up on any easter eggs that i may have missed previously so let's continue just saying to consume the sun will destroy it so that was like the first mention of the sun summoner So this scene of like where we first see Alina and Mal on screen together and I really liked how they show they really care for each other even just in like the subtle movements that they have with each other or just Alina smiling when she sees Mal, her closest friend. Just a little nice character detail I like there. So this is where we're first meeting the crows and I love them. But the knock off. Jesper with his, uh, his guns. I also really enjoyed how they added in the background that like the Kaz background music or his little song as they do in TV shows. I really like the casting of Kaz of being Freddie Carter and I feel like they did a really good job at capturing the tone of Ketterdam and how dark that little island is of the crime underworld there. So, whatever. Point is, either it was a group effort or a ghost. And I also wanted to point out in this scene where he, uh, Kaz is talking to this guy who's offering up a job that Kaz is like observing the room and the actor really captured that keeping an eye on everyone making sure everything is running according to his standard I really like that Our first appearance of Inej <laughs> Hello Inej What information do you have for me tonight? With Kazan and Nash, I feel this prequel story that they made for the show was really well done and it's a really good introduction to the Six of Crows characters alongside with the Shadow and Bone characters. It's a nice way to connect the Six of Crows characters to Alina. It's really nice to see what they were doing before the Six of Crows book. Let me track her. Zoya, I'm a scholar. And we have our first appearance of Zoya and I think that little small scene between Mal and Zoya was a nice indication of where further on we'll see how it affects Alina. So it was made hundreds of years ago by that crazy Grisha. The black heretic. Yeah, the one who controls Shadow, right? Well, they got one in their army now, don't they? General Kirigan? Your point? Well, if one of his kind made it, can't he unmake it? That's our first appearance of the Darkling or in the show they refer to him as General Kirigan and I feel again they did such a good job at the casting with Ben Barnes and including all his mysterious traits that a lot of people talk about and they call him the Black Heretic and like those little titles that 
they give him and I really like how they included all of those little things and hints towards of course the characters in the book but as well as the the crows here are discussing how they're going to be crossing the fold and how the fold came to be and kind of subtle hints of that and a little bit bits of foreshadowing the ominous music i love it and they are entering the fold And I love how creepy it is when they're in the fold, how like quiet it is, how the music just is just silence once they enter the fold. He just had to light the lantern. <laughs> Again, the CGI. Yep, it got mouth. Jeez. And I feel at this point, Alina is just regretting like making that decision to go. Jeez, they decided to summon her. <laughs> so I really like how they kind of show you how like news crosses the different areas of the um, continent of from West Rafka to Ketterdam to um, how everyone returned from this journey from this failed journey across the fold to East Rafka and it's really nice to see. This guy's part of Alina's mapmaker crew and he jumped off the boat. The skiff. Tell me what happened in the fold. What saved you? That's basically a heart a heart render. They're obviously influencing him to tell the truth. You're getting chills just watching this again. <laughs> this was a sun summoner. So I feel like the disbelief on everyone's faces are like, oh my god, this childhood myth and legend of a sun summoner is actually true and everyone's just like what the heck is gonna happen now her name is Alina Starko god I feel so bad for him Alina and they end up shooting this guy and that was the end of episode one so it's really nice to get back into this world like I didn't forget as many things as I thought I did since my first watch of this and I was planning to reread the books I reread the Shadow and Bone trilogy, but I have yet to get to the Six of Crows duology as well as the King of Scars duology. So I'm behind on the reading part, but it's really nice to get back into the world of Ravka. And overall, I think this episode's a really nice introduction to the TV show and as well for non-readers of the books. So I think it's still like 10 out of 10 for me. It's like a good adaptation and I'm really excited to see what season 2 has in store. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in episode 2, that will be linked up above and in the description below. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.